morning guys or afternoon or whenever you're watching this it's just hard for me because it's the morning for me anyways we're gonna start our brand new chapter talking about transformations so transformations are super fun I love them a ton um, it's just about like having a shape on a graph and like moving it around and making it change and stuff I think it's so neat um, so the first type of transformation that we're going to talk about is a translation. So it's kind of weird. Transformations is all encompassing. Like anything that you might do to a shape is a transformation. A translation is a very specific one. So we're going to talk about translations and we'll do that on page 96 and 97. I'm pretty sure when I was setting up this notebook in the video, I left this page blank and I numbered it, but I don't know if we're gonna put anything on it, honestly, but we'll see. Alrighty, so if we turn to our translations page, I actually wanna start on page 97. So when we talk about translations, um, <clears throat> a translation, uh, I guess another word for it, would be a slide. So kind of like if I have a shape on a graph and we slide to the left, slide to the right, or slide up, or slide down. So like just if you're sliding that shape around, almost like it, you're laying it flat and then just like moving it around with your hand like this and that's it. We wanna talk about that in a couple of different ways. Firstly, um, correct like mathematical notation for explaining to somebody else that you are doing a translation. Um, kind of with the translation, there's one of two ways to do it. We have like coordinate translation notation, or we have like proper translation notation, but we want to be familiar with both because they're both pretty easy, I think. So our proper notation is where I do a capital T for translation. And then kind of as a subscript, our little baby number, we put A comma B down here, where A and B are describing how you're translating. And we'll kind of get to what A is talking about and what B is talking about in just a little bit. Um, another way to describe a translation is using coordinate notation, which in that case, I'm using like an ordered pair. And so in my parentheses, I would do x plus a comma y plus b where a and b stand for the same thing in this one as they do in that one and so that kind of explains a little bit better what's going on so a is telling me how x is changing so moving left or right um, right if it's positive left if it's negative and then b tells me how y is changing so up and down up if it's positive down if it's negative easy simple stuff now, when it comes to corresponding parts and things in the shape, uh, everything remains the same. So the shape that I start with, let's say we have a triangle, triangle ABC, and it doesn't have to be a triangle. Clearly, it could be a trapezoid or something like that or a quadrilateral. Um, <clears throat> if I take triangle ABC, um, the OG one, we call that the pre-image. and I translate it, or I do some sort of transformation to it, the new triangle has to have a slightly different name, but I want to know that it's related to the first, so I still call it triangle ABC, but we put these little tick marks up towards the top, and we say A prime, B prime, C prime, which just stands for the changed figure, or the image. And everything um, like stays the same. So all the lengths of the sides will remain the same length in the new one. Um, and all the angle measures will remain the same. And we'll talk about more of that stuff later. But basically everything remains the same from shape to shape, which I think makes sense. So starting with this one here, I actually think I want to go all the way to the bottom and work our way up. I kind of think that's the easier way to think about it. So <clears throat> um, writing a rule, if I'm looking at a graph where there are already two shapes and I want to describe what's going on, um, then I want to write a translation rule where in the first set of, or in my set of like 
arrows right here. The first number is describing how I'm moving left or right, and the second number is describing how I'm moving up or down. And if I'm not moving in any of those, then I would use zeros. So if we open this up, oop, I cut it kind of poorly, um, and take a look. First, I have to identify what my pre-image is, so the original figure. And we can always tell because it won't have the primies next to it. So I'm going to outline my pre-image in green. And then to figure out how I go from pre-image to image, I kind of want to just count from point to point. Um, I think that's the easiest way. So for me, I noticed C to C seemed pretty easy to count. Um, and so I want to count in the X direction first. So from C to C, I have to go back one, two, so like negative two, and it went up one, so positive one. And just for good measure, just to double check, I could do it again with point B to B prime. And this also goes back two, so negative two, and up one. They should all do the same thing. So really, I only need to count one point. Um, but because my translation here is going back two and up one, or left two and up one, we would describe that as t and then negative two comma one, because I went left two, up one, and up is positive. Now you could write it as like x minus two, y plus one as well, and that would be in our like ordered pair notation, rather than, this is actually called vector notation. Um, I kind of like that way. Feels a little bit like more concise to me, um, but either one is good, and we want to be familiar with both. Okay, so on to the next. Um, first, I want to identify my pre-image, and I don't know if this video is turning blue or something, or if it's just my screen, but um, if it is, oops, I don't know what's going on. Um, this one here is my pre-image because it doesn't have any primies on it. That one over there I can see has a little tick mark, so that one is my image. And so for me, I just kind of thought that B looked the easiest to count to. So from B to B prime, because like I have to go from letter to letter, like I shouldn't mix letters. I, I hope that's clear and makes sense. So if I go from B to B, I want to count in the X direction first. So now I'm going forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me just double count that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So I'm forward six. That's positive six. And then I'm going up one, two, three, four, and then I land on B. So because I went forward six, up four, both things are positive, like right and up. So I would do T, six comma four, X comma Y, or X plus six because it's positive, and Y plus four because it's positive. And I guess I didn't say that over here. I did Y, or X minus two because it was negative. So hopefully that makes sense. And then the last one here, um, I want to find that prime image first, and it's right here because this one doesn't have any primies on it. Now this one simply was um, slid to the right, or slide to the right. <laughs> and so, I don't know, like, I guess I'll count from B to B prime, and that's just going right one, two, three, four, five. So because I only went write five and I didn't go up or down at all, I would do five comma zero because I didn't go up or down at all. Or in quarter uh, coordinate notation, x plus five comma y plus zero, but you don't really need to put that, so. Okay, so kind of understanding how a translation looks, um, we can also uh, not graph it and just find where my ordered pairs would be. So if we move up one, um, if I have that a triangle ABC is located at the points negative two comma three, zero comma negative one, and four comma two, if they tell me how it's translated, I don't really need to go graph it or whatever. I can just find where the image points are gonna be by using the rule. So translate triangle ABC right one, and up seven. 
So since a is at negative 2 comma 3, a prime, um, right one is in the positive direction for x, so this would now be at negative 1. And up 7 is in the positive direction for y, so up 7 from that would be 10. So really because, again, it's right 1, I'm like adding 1 to x, and because it's up 7, I'm adding 7 to y. So that's really all I'm doing to figure it out. Like rather than having to graph it and do it, you can just kind of add. So b is at 0 comma negative 1, and that should also move in the same direction. So if I add 1 to x and add 7 to y, there we go. And then finally c is at 4 comma 2. And so right 1 is going to be c prime is at 5 comma 9. And there you go. Now you can also do it when they tell you just the correct notation. So if you see a t, that means translate. And then 2 comma negative 3, because the 2 is positive, that means x is being added by 2. And because the 3 is negative, that means y is being subtracted by 3. And they just go in the same order as an ordered pair. So rather than writing all of the uh, pre-image points again, I'm just going to put the image points. So a prime would be at 0, comma 0. Oh, look at that. Because like 2 and negative 2 is 0, and negative 3 and 3 is 0. That's fun. Um, B prime would be at 2, comma negative 4. Like I'm just adding these points together. That's it. And then C prime would be at 6, comma negative 1. Now this is also a translation, and I can tell because they took an original point and they added or subtracted something to it, and whenever we're adding and subtracting stuff, that's a translation. So using those same points, a prime, um, I'm going to subtract 3 from x, so negative 5, and I'm not going to do anything to y. So this is one that, again, is just sliding to the left, um, so 3. b prime would be at negative 3 comma negative 1 and c prime would be at 1 comma 2 and again this one is very similar to example 2 um, so they're telling me in the x direction I need to go negative 3 and in the y direction I'm going 0 so a prime would be negative 5 comma 3 b prime um, Oh, this is the same one as the last one. Look at that. I'm such a goofball. So negative 3 comma negative 1. And then C is 1 comma 2. So then the only other thing that you might do is if you don't love to think about it in your head and add and subtract numbers, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? You could also just do it on a graph. So, um, for example, if they give you an image right here, and they tell you to capital T comma ne or negative 3 comma negative 5. They're telling you how to move it. And so um, the negative 3 means I'm going to go left 3. The negative 5 means I'm going to go down 5. And so I could just take each ordered pair and do that, or really each point and do that. So like if I take M and I go back 3, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is where new m prime is going to go. So rather than writing out all the ordered pairs, I can kind of just count it out and plot my points. So n, I would go negative 3, comma negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that would be n prime. And it is super important to label your points correctly so we know who's who. Um, L, I would do negative 3, comma negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, oh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we just reconnect to get our trapezoid back. And you should notice that everything is still like the same length and angle measure and like the shape still looks like it's the same shape. Just shift it over. All right, last but not least, and then I'm going to do a separate video to do the examples on page 96 there. Um, this one here is telling me to translate. I can tell because it's adding and subtracting numbers. So this is showing me that I should go right 2 and down 3. So I'll just do the same thing, like start at M and go right 2, 
down 3, and we get m prime. n will go right 2, down 3, for n prime. L will go right 2, down 3. And then O, right 2, down 3. And then reconnect all of our points. So again, it looks like the same trapezoid just shifted over. Oop, oh my god. Ah! I <laughs> maybe use a straight edge. Alrighty, guys, so we'll leave it there in this video. And in the separate video, I will do a whole bunch more examples with you on page 96.